I wanted to give you some quick instructions for how to get started with the matching and coloring portion of our DNA origami activity. So the first thing you're going to do when you get this um, strange looking piece of paper is turn it so the words front and back are at the top and so you can see them. Um, that'll just give you a point of reference as I go through and kind of show you what we're doing. You also will need a total of five different colored either markers or pencils. Um, it's up to you. You can share with a neighbor or whatever. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, I want to call your attention to some different features. And I'm going to start in like our center columns, like right, right here and then this center column. Um, this represents a DNA molecule, and even though it doesn't look like it now, it will look like the structure of a DNA molecule. Um, on the center section, which is what I was just now talking about, you'll notice that we have these two triangles, and those two triangles that are opposite of each other, those represent the nitrogen bases of DNA. And then on the outside piece where you've got these black, almost little bars um, with a little sugar ring in the inside, this actually represents the sugar, and then the black box with the four circles around it represents the phosphate group. So here we have our sugar and our phosphate backbone, and then our nitrogen bases in the center. And so one piece that includes the sugar phosphate um, and one piece of the triangle represents a nucleotide. So just as a point of reference. Our first task is to take a look. We're going to go ahead and start on the front side. And I want you to notice some differences in each of our, our blocks. First of all, some of these have two lines on this diagonal line, so two slashes. So the first one and the second one both have two slashes on the diagonal line. When I get down to the third one, I actually notice there are three slashes. And so the two slashes and the three slashes are different. Those actually represent the number of hydrogen bonds between the bases on opposite sides. So this one has two nitro or this one has two hydrogen bonds, and this one has three hydrogen bonds. I also want to point out that sometimes you have a base that has one ring. So this has got like one polygon, and over here we have two rings, and that's got two polygons. And so that happens whether it's the two slashes. We also have two rings and three slashes, and one ring with three slashes. Okay, so there's a total of four different nucleotide bases. There's your phosphate group and your sugar group. So what I'm going to do is I've actually set my pen. Now I am using my finger, so forgive me for if it gets sloppy. But I'm going to go ahead and start on my two slashed two ring. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the color green to represent that particular piece. You can use whatever color you want. So for all of my two slash two rings, I'm going to go ahead and color those green. So now I look down to the next section. This is a two slash, and here I have my two ring. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color that piece green too. Oh, I guess I'm a little bit dark. Let me try and lighten it up a little bit for you. Okay. Um, so then now this next one has three slashes. So I'm not going to color anything there because the one after that is back to two slashes. So I'm going to go to my two slashes, and it's actually this side that has the two rings. So I'm going to color that one that time. Um, and then you're going to repeat this on the opposite side where it says back. So here I am with my two rings, two slashes. And I'm going to go ahead and color this in. Down here, two rings, two slashes. Then I've got, you're going to color it better than me. I'm just doing it quickly so you get the idea. This one's a three slashes with the two rings, so we don't want to color that one. But then down here we've got another two slash, two ring. And so I'm just going to color all of those. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a different color. Um, let's say blue, for example. And I'm going to color the ones that are opposite. So the ones that are two slashes and one ring. I'm going to color all of those the same color. And again, you can use whichever colors you choose. So that means here would be this color. This one's going to be this blue because these are all two slashes, one ring. So all of my two slashes, one ring get to be the same color. You're going to repeat this type of pattern using two different colors for the ones that have three slashes. Um, also, I would suggest 
that you color just your sugars a different color. So I like purple, so I'm gonna do purple for my sugars. And so all of my sugars on both, you know, the left side, the middle, and the right side, I would color all of my sugars the same color. If you want to go back and add color to um, the phosphates, you can. Um, like if I wanted to go back and put some orange in there, I can do that. I don't know, I picked orange just off the top of my head. But you don't have to add color to that section. All right, so what I'd like for you to do in class today is to make sure that you have finished all of the coloring on this entire handout because what we're going to do when we come to class tomorrow is we're folding the origami. So we're actually going to have to have it ready to fold, and I'll explain how to do all the folding on Friday. But I want you to make sure you know how the coloring works, and this video will be posted on Edline in case you need to refer back to it. All right, good luck coloring.